Hey, we're back in the garage on Saturday for Woodworking with Wes. I don't know what the weather is like in your country, but here it's beginning to feel a lot like fall. And we have a special project that's going to go in our home. In our mudroom, we need a coat hook shelf to hang our winter coats. We've milled some wood and let's get started. To get started, we're going to have five hooks on our coat rack. I want to space them about five inches apart and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my square here and we're going to do a little layout on one of our boards to determine how long we need to make our shelf. That's our first thing we're going to do. Now let's find our center and work our way out from center. This is 32 and 3 quarters so we're basically 16. Let's go 16 and a quarter and we'll work out from there. So let's like a little line right here. And then I want to have five inches on center between my shelves. And so I'm laying my tape measure here. I'm going to put it on 15. So there'll be one hook at 10, one hook at 5, one hook at 20, and one hook at 25. Let's make some marks on that. Now there's a reason that I'm making these five inches apart. When we go to screw this onto the wall, our studs are 16 on center. And when I get ready to put my coat hooks on here, I'm going to put in two countersink holes underneath where the coat racks, where the hooks go to screw into the studs. And that's going to be how I mount this on the wall. And then when I put the coat hook over it, you won't see the mounting screws that hold this to the wall really solid. Okay, here's our coat hooks. One, two, three, four, five, five inches in between. On the outside, I don't want five inches. So I'm thinking three inches to the outside. Again, we'll take our tape measure, we'll lay out here. I'm just burning a, a measurement, not anything particular. Okay, and then one, two, three. Let's go ahead and make two more lines again. So there's our spacing for our hooks. Now, out here to the side, we're going to need a corbel. The way it's going to be made, there's going to be a shelf on top, a back place where the hook's hooked to, and then we'll get around to the decorative stuff just in just a minute, but we've got to have a corbel. Our corbel, our, we've milled our material to three quarters inches wide. So we want our corbel space to be three quarters of an inch. We'll mark that on each side. So that's where our corbel will be, right here. I'm gonna go ahead and mark that line all the way through so I remind myself that that's actually my corbel. All right. Okay, so corbel, corbel, space, 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 hook, hook, hook. Okay, and now on the outside of the corbel, I think I want an additional three quarters of an inch. All right, so the end of my board is going to be from that line to this line. And let's see what I ended up with. We'll burn an inch, and we are 30 inches but that's 29 inches because we're burning inch. So we're 29 inches from outside of board to outside of board for where my coat hooks go. So let's turn around here and we'll show that to you. All right, here's my outside of my board. Here's my corbel, space, a hook, space, hook, space, hook, blah, 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 corbel, end of board. All right, now our shelf that I want to put on top I want that to overhang the end of my, board, my upright board. So my upright board, my shelf, I want my shelf on top to overhang. So if we're 29 inches, I think I want my shelf to overhang an additional three quarters of an inch on each side. So there's another inch and a half. So our top shelf is going to be 30 and a half inches. So now we have all of our measurements. Our top shelf is going to be 30 and a half inches. 
Our board with our hooks on it is going to be 29 inches. Now let's take a look at our wood here and see which board we want to be what. Okay, this board, this is long enough. That's a nice piece of wood, has a knot on the back. Let's make that against the wall. So here is our hook board, and we want that to be 29 inches, and it is six inches wide right now. Let's cut that to five and three quarters by 29 inches. So now we have the size of our hook board. All right. I know what I want to do with this one, so I think I'm going to make this my top. So my top, I want to have as much width as I can. I'm six and a quarter. We're going to leave that six and a quarter, and it'll be by 30 and a half. So six and one quarter by 30 and one half is our shelf up on top. So there's our shelf. We'll cut that to width now. This little board I'm going to make into my corbels. I'm going to work on the corbels in just a minute, but we're going to square this board up. I have my saw sled set on my saw, and so we're going to do that. This piece of wood here, I'm going to have a little trim around the top of my shelf, and I'm saving this piece for my trim piece. We'll come back to that. But let's go to our saw and cut all of our boards to length, and then rip the ones that need to be ripped to width after we get them cut to length. Okay, by sanding out all of our pencil marks, we've now sanded our boards smooth and ready to go. Let's show you here what I'm doing. Here's my shelf up top. Here's my board with my hooks. So this is like this. This is like this in the back. We're going to run a just an OG edge around the top of our board and it'll be faced down. And we're going to run an OG edge around our hook board like that. And then we'll come back and we'll work on the corbels. I'll show you what a corbel is and how we're going to cut it out. Now that we have routed both top shelf and hook plate. I set it together just as basically how it's going to go and I re-established my center lines. This is where my corbels are going to go out here. We're going to work on the corbels next. I'm going to make the corbels out of this piece of wood. They're going to go right here, but we're going to make a little bit of a decorative cut. But now that we have this piece done, we know what size to make it. We're going to make them this wide, four and a half inches wide. But we're going to have them also be, um, I think we're going to make them four and a half inches long too. So what we're going to do here is we'll mark a layout line here of four and a half on our board. So now we have a four and a half by four and a half inch block and a corbel is basically a shelf type support. I think what we'll do is just give it a kind of a cove cut look. I think we'll come in an inch and down an inch. And then give it a nice curve cut like that. So what we'll do is we'll Go ahead and cut it, finish cutting it four and a half by four and a half, and then we'll make this cut on our bandsaw and sand it with a block sander. I decided to see if a gallon can would give me a nicer arch, arc, whatever, to my corbel. And yes, I like that lots better. So let's go ahead and do the same thing on this side, one inch.
and one inch. And now we have a nice radius instead of a hand-drawn radius. We have a nice radius that is given to us by our gallon can. Okay, we'll cut those out and come back and be sanded on those. Okay, with my bench top bandsaw set up, we'll cut the arc on our little corbel blocks. We'll go ahead and get those sanded out and put an eighth inch round over on each side and they'll go on there just like that. With our little corbel pieces all sanded and our lines marked, I've laid this on a flat piece of wood to give me a good flat surface. And I'm just going to attach this with 18 gauge, inch and a half nails from the back side, like that. And we'll put three nails. So there's three nails on the back side to hold our corbel. We'll do that to the other side and then the corbels will be attached. With our supports attached, it's time to attach our top shelf. Now I want to show you a little trick that I did. We want this to be perfectly centered. So if you come around to the back side, I marked a little center line. And on the back of my top shelf, I marked a little center line. And so when I get ready to nail, all I've got to do is line up those two little center lines and I'm perfect. I'm all centered. And so I'm going to turn this around to me so I can see it, being as I'm the one that has to nail it. And I'm going to, whoop, turn it around like this. And I'm going to stand it up like this. And we're just going to attach it again with inch and a half, 18 gauge nails. I've lined up my two center lines. And we'll just go down the top here, make sure that our board is flush across the back now i'm not going to worry about those nail holes because i'm going to show you in just a minute we're going to solve that now we need to attach the shelf to the front of the corbel also and we'll do that by just pulling it tight and giving it one nail from the top side down into that corbel, just like that. Our shelf is beginning to come together. We've got one more little piece to put on, and I'll show you that in just a second here. I'll get it made and show you how it goes on. It's actually going to be just a little trim border piece that'll go around the top here and act as a backstop. Okay, this is coming out good. We're now getting ready to put a little backstop type trim piece around it. I use the exact same router bit to make myself a little one inch wide OG strip that is gonna go across the back of here. It'll be 45 along those lines and then a little return piece like this will be nailed on right there. And so let's go over to our saw with our angle jig, our 45 degree angle jig. Let's measure this. That is 28 and a quarter. So this piece needs to be 28 and a quarter, long point to long point. And our long point is going to be the, the back side of our board. So we'll face the route in and cut our 28 and a quarter. Okay, mark our 28 and a quarter. Line our 28 and a quarter up to our saw cut. Right. 
our back piece. And we're going to attach it the same way that we did everything else with inch and a half nails, 18 gauge nails. And we are right where we want to be there. Good. Get my nail gun set up here. And I'm going to give this just a little bit of glue. We don't want any squeeze out. And so we just want some little drops of glue along there to help hold our nails. Like that. We'll carefully turn that over and set it so that we don't smear our glue anywhere. There we are, and there we are. Okay. We'll come back later and fill those nail holes. All right, now we'll get ready to cut these pieces. And I want them to be five and a half inches. Five and a half inches, five and a half inches. Yeah, five and a half inches. So we'll go back over here to our angle jig. And we'll mark five and a half inches to long point. On every angle cut, there is a long point and a short point. The long point is to the outside of the angle. The short point is to the inside of the angle. And you'll hear me talk about long point and short point from time to time. But just so you know, long point to the outside, short point to the inside. All right, so this cut right here and we want that mark to be let's see am i right no i'm backwards okay got to be like this all right got to remember what i'm doing here okay okay i have these two pieces cut now and i will Put those in there and line them up just like that. Okay, again, we'll put a little glue on the joint there and just a couple of little spots there. And very gently make sure that we put it down without smearing it around. One nail in the front or back. One nail in the front. Same on the other side. Okay, there we are. Now, like I say, we'll fill our nail holes and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna put a real cool finish on this, a one-step finish that's gonna look really neat. Now we have our coat hook rack all done, all sanded, ready for a finish. Let's talk about the finish. We're going to use the Pro Coat product that we've introduced you to the past. Unicoat is the glaze that we have, that we use, but they gave me an insight on a better way to use it. They've sent us a little activator, and you mix the activator with the glaze, and it creates a hard one coat finish that you can put on and makes a lasting one coat waterproof, durable finish. I've picked classic gray as our color. We're gonna mix it three parts to one, and we're gonna put it on.
I'm mixing six teaspoons of this glaze, this Unicoat. And then we're going to mix two tablespoons of the activator. And we got just a little extra in there, and that's kind of basically according to the recipe, it needed to be that. Like I say, according to the website, the recipe was three parts of activator to 10 parts of the glaze, the Unicoat. And so, because we're doing a small amount, we're just doing it with a teaspoon. Okay, and they say that this will go on just like our other mix. We just need to make sure we get it all mixed up really good. And then it says after you mix it, let it sit for five minutes according to the instructions. And that gives a chance for the chemical reaction to take place that will allow this to be a one coat durable finish. And so we are going to give it that five minutes. Then we're going to come back and apply it. Okay, after waiting the prescribed five minutes, we're getting ready to go ahead and put it on. According to the instructions, this will be ready to touch and, and work with in 12 to 24 hours and fully cured in three days to its total dry and waterproof finish. So we're just going to do like we would normally do with it and just paint it on with our little brush and wipe it with our paper towel just like we have done in the past. Making sure we cover our surfaces real good so that we don't have any gaps in our coverage. The activator, it says, also makes it so it dries better, too. So we're excited about that because that'll make our project look great when it's all done. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and get that edge there, at least on the sides. Okay. We're going to wipe it with a paper towel like we do when we do our glaze. to kind of hang in the profile of our route a little bit, give us that glazing look that we like to do. And then wipe the rest of it, our, our flat surfaces nice and clean. And that glaze really highlights this grain. By the way, I don't know that I ever said, but we are using ash for our wood. So this is just white ash that we're using. That gray color gives it a kind of a real weathered look. I like that weathered look. Okay, it's going to kind of look like that. 
We'll come back when we're all done with the glaze and show you what it looked like when it got all finished. Our finish is now dry enough to install our coat hooks. These are the coat hooks we purchased. We got them from Amazon and we kind of like those. They're kind of cool. We're going to be mounting them right at the base of our route and we'll center them. Remember our center lines are still there and we're going to center them on our line. And so our hardware is going to look just like that. Wow, that looks pretty darn cool. Okay, let's start in the center, work our way out. We're going to be using a centering bit. It's called a VEX bit. You put it into the hole of your where your screw goes and you push it in and the drill bit centers automatically, puts a pilot hole in your wood. So we'll do that. We'll set that right there and put our glasses on so we can see. And then we'll take our, whoop. our VEX bit. You can see how that gives me a pilot hole right there. Okay, we'll install them all just like that. Well, there's our little mudroom coat hook rack with a shelf on top. Turned out pretty nice. And this is an easy project for you to do and something that is very handy for everybody's home. That's the kind of projects we like to do on woodworking with Wes.